Bonjour fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World and we are in the countryside of Normandy. One of the prettiest parts, well, they're all pretty parts around France, I'm not gonna lie to you. But this is one of the ones that a lot of Americans come to because of the D-Day beaches in Mont Saint-Michel and all kinds of great things to see and do here in Normandy. And you might be thinking, Mark, where should we go in Normandy? Because Normandy really is part of this like two week American tour of France, you know, you get your Paris, you get your Normandy, your Loire Valley, maybe head down to Provence or not, but then you're back to Paris and you take off. So what I wanna do is give you kind of our top 10 things to see and do when you are here in Normandy. So let's get started. Now, the first thing you should do when you do come here is I highly recommend it, is going to the D-Day beaches and having that whole experience. Because honestly, when you go to the D-Day, whether it's Omaha or Utah or Juneau or, or any of the beaches, Sword Beach, you really get a feel for what happened here 70 years ago. And it's a really moving experience with the beaches scene. Man, they had to run up that beach and that's where the fire was coming from. There's tons of museums around here. You know, if you go to Bayeux, there, there's the Battle of Normandy Museum. There's an Overlord Museum museum there's you know that's another museum there's the Omaha Beach Museum there's so many museums out there to really give you a feel for what happened on that day so you definitely want to check those out and one thing I really highly recommend if you want to see the personal sacrifice and get really a moving story like everybody in our family even the kids were in tears because of the sacrifice people made for this is go to the American Cemetery at Omaha Beach and go in their visitor center yeah, going to see the cemeteries is very moving, but when you go in the, the visitor center downstairs, you go through their exhibition and you see the sacrifices people made, what happened to these people, it really puts things in context because then you see the guy that, you know, when you go to St. Eglise and you'll see, oh, why is there a parachutist, a paratrooper stuck on the church? And you'll say, oh, well, he was there and he, you know, he didn't get killed and that he pretended like he was dead or something like that. But the real story is his buddy also landed on there and his buddy got shot and killed, but before he died, he killed the Germans that were there there and so they didn't shoot his buddy off the church I mean there's just all these amazing stories that are there that are really moving I do suggest going to the beaches Omaha Beach or Juneau or, or Utah or any of them it is well worth it and there's all kinds of things all around from museums to memorials to just the whole atmosphere that's here it's a definite must okay and it can be very somber and it can be if you, you know if you got friends in the military and stuff like that I mean, it'll hit you right here, okay? Because I know we, everyone had tears when we did this, okay? Now, kind of a happier place to go when you are coming to Normandy. Number two on our list is Mont Saint-Michel. Now, Mont Saint-Michel is an island most of the time. It's an island and then the water goes out and it's not so much an island and it is an island. The water goes in and out. Anyway, Mont Saint-Michel is, if you've seen any tourism stuff for France, you've seen pictures of Mont Saint-Michel, this island with the abbey on top. Yes, you will want to go there. It is super touristy. I mean, it gets millions of tourists a year. There's literally one street that goes up and you'll fight your way to the top to get to the abbey but it is so gorgeous because when you come there and you see it on the horizon because you'll see it a ways out you'll see it on the horizon like wow and you drive up and you you park your car in the most insane unhelpful parking lot ever just give me the heads up on that one just be prepared for frustration at the checkout okay you go in there you get one of the free buses that take you from the parking lot to the foot of the, the foot of like the, the the outcrop you go out there you look up you're like wow this is our christmas picture this is what it's going to be i mean it's in our christmas picture this year just take my word for it and you go there but you wander through and they have like this silly like torture museum or it's got you know a, you know a, a torture museum you know to like you know entertain you and things like that there's all kinds of these silly little things touristy things going on the way up restaurants or some hotels and stuff like that but what you want to see is you want to go in the abbey on the top and you can see i mean this thing has been had people for like 12 hundred years there's been somebody and some kind of church thing there and it's been a pilgrimage site for a long time it's like one of the top four pilgrimage sites in Catholicism in Christianity and I don't know if they put the tourists in there because that would be a lot more but you see people coming there it is just a fantastic place to visit well worth it for the day trip to get there do you want to spend the night there if you spend the night you can see it and have it basically all to yourself because most people have gone you know by four or five o'clock in the afternoon we had our own transport we went there and we got there about two and it was packed by the time we left at six, there was nobody around. So that was a nice little thing there. So Mont Saint Michel's number two. Number three, we're gonna go to Bayo. And Bayo, what you wanna go see there is you wanna go to the Bayo Tapestry. This is William the Conqueror's story of the battle, the lead up to the Battle of Hastings in 1066, where William became William the Conqueror instead of William the Bastard. And the thing is, it tells the story of Harold and how he Edward told Harold that he William will be king, and don't tell him. And you see, oh, we got stuck in quicksand and help people. And that's by Mont Saint Michel. You'll see the stuff and in, the, in the, the kind of quicksandy stuff there. And it tells the whole history. The thing is, this thing is a thou almost a thousand years old. This tapestry, and it's like 70 meters long. I mean, the museum goes on forever, and they got a great 
great audio guide that it points out all the different stuff. Like you see, you know, they're taking the, the, the chain mail off the dead bodies and the heads cut off and a guy chopping off the head of a horse. It sounds crazy. Remember, this is knitted in, okay? So it's still kids safe, but you see what really went into it and it is truly an amazing thing. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You have to see that. It's one of the most coolest things. Then you'll see Harold with an arrow in his eye and you're like, hey, I've seen that before. Yes, yes, you have, okay? Other sites to see in Bayo. They actually have the, the Battle of Normandy Museum there, which is really well done. I do suggest watch the movie when you're there. They have it in French and English. Go check that out. They have all, you know, the, they have the history of the different people, you know, the, and they, they don't talk about the Germans and say the Germans that didn't destroy Paris, the Germans that they were like, you know, didn't like, they wanted to kill Hitler and stuff like that. But also they'll talk about all the stuff the Americans did and the Canadians and the Belgians and all these other people. That wasn't just Americans on, on, on D-Day or, or Canadians, it was British. There's people from all over the world that were coming to fight the Nazis. And so you get a really great great kind of background on that. Then another thing you do when you are there is go see the cathedral there. It's as big as Notre Dame in Paris and it is called Notre Dame as well there and it is really a cool church and that's actually where the tapestry used to hang occasionally which is kind of cool to think about what would like would it look like in situ when people could come and they couldn't read and stuff like that and they see the history of their ancestors. It's kind of you know a nice little propaganda film like right there in the church but it is you see in the tapestry is just amazing that's the top one there okay. Now the fourth place to check out is now we've gone from like lower Normandy, now we're going to Upper Normandy. And when you go up there, you have Enfleur, which is this cute fishing village. The, the, the port is really cool because it has all these houses up on there. And then you see like, the, oh, it's a, it's a painting village. You can understand why painters would want to come there and, and paint stuff. And there are some neat, 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 decent museums there. There's the Ethnographic Museum. So you can see how people kind of live throughout time in Enfleur. There's the Maritime Museum there. So, you, I mean, it is a port city, so you can see the history of that. There's Eugene, Eugene Boudin, Boudin Museum. If you want to have some art, that's there as well. The thing is, there's some really cool churches there. One of the biggest wooden churches in France. Maybe the biggest wooden church in France is there. It is a cool little stopover when you do go there. Small place, but well worth checking out. Now, next on our list is a bigger place. It's Rune. Rune is dear to our hearts. A few years ago, we were there and we are actually, we're looking to move to Rune. So, we Rune, we love you. Anybody want to give us a job there, we'll totally go. Because Rune is fantastic. The cathedral there, you have seen it before because Monet has painted it dozens of times, okay? And the thing is, the cathedral is fantastic see that but when you walk through the whole city the people are super nice when you're there english is spoken quite a bit there as well and the people are awesome when you walk through you can see the big clock of the close uh holy log there's this huge clock that's in there there's other churches joan of arc that's where she unfortunately got burned at the stake so there's a lot of joan of arc materials there there's tons of cool churches to check out there's some good museums as well the, the Beaux arts museum is definitely worth checking out but for me the thing with going to road is going to see the cathedral and just to walk by, walk down the shopping street with the, the huge clocks up there. We love it. We actually have a video on what to see and do on Rhone because we really enjoyed it. I would go there like that, no problem. Now, the sixth place to check out is if you're a Monet fan, you're looking at Giverny. Now, I, I know Giverny's in Normandy, but you can actually do it as a day trip from Paris, no problem. Uh, but Giverny, you want to go there, you want to go see where he painted the water lilies and the, the Japanese bridge and all these kind of things to see where he lived. It's all right there, okay? It's a nice, easy day trip from Paris, so you can do that, but it is worth checking out if you are a Monet fan. Yes, you can see some paintings. You can see his, his workroom and his studio and all these kind of things, so it is kind of cool. But just seeing like, oh, that's where the water lilies are. And you can kind of imagine him there painting it, you know? And I mean, I'm a big Monet fan, so for me, it's like I could see him painting it. And I'm like, that's him right there seeing those. That's the same thing. It gives you a little bit of chills when you do do that. Now, the seventh thing you should do when you come here is go explore the countryside. The Paz Dog, or the, I can never say it right, the Og Country. Basically, when you're coming out and you explore throughout Normandy, you're going to see a lot of rustic beauty. Like, it's kind of like two distinct parts. If you look at Upper Normandy by Rhone and Enfleur, it seems more polished. You come down farther south, it has much more of a, like, a rustic, just hardy beauty that's here and the churches and the countryside with the orchards and stuff like that is just beautiful so you definitely want to see those when you are there and take the time to go through because you'll see all these little villages with these churches and like norman churches and you you see them and you're like man this just doesn't seem like this you know fancy france it's like it's like like manly france like tough france and you're like wow i mean the beauty in this part of france 
it's not, I don't know, if you go down to the south, it's more of a refined George Clooney beauty. Whereas here, when you come to, to Normandy and you see these places, it's more like the John Wayne tough beauty. It sounds silly, but it does have this kind of feel to it. And you have the stonework and all this stuff and just exploring the countryside, it's great. That's why I highly recommend you want to rent a car when you're here and go and explore because public transport, there is some, but it doesn't always go and it's not always super helpful. Getting to Mont Saint-Michel and back is sometimes almost impossible. So you really need to rent a car and it gives you a chance to stay out there, stay at these really cool bed and breakfasts that are in former farmhouses and stuff like that and just love it, okay? So definitely get out and explore the countryside in Normandy. Now the thing is, not everybody likes the countryside. Some people like their beach things and there's so many fishing villages and beach places to go to. Duville, Treville, whatever you can go to. If you want to have a thing for kids, you can go there. If you want to have a more fancy upscale thing, you can go to Duville and do that. And you have like the beaches and you have the, the strip and all these kind of things. And when you go there, you can really relax and it's hard to remember that wait this is actually where some of the d-day battles took place because you're sitting on a boardwalk having a drink and enjoying your cider and stuff like that and you, you kind of miss that and that's one of the things if you want to feel the d-day history you come more to like the bayo and saint maria Aglis and those kind of things if you want to like the more ritzier kind of stuff you're going to up to on floor and deville and things like that but it is great and those fishing villages are so cute and so much good food when you're there and the beach places in the summer in the winter it's still cold and the spring it's still cold Okay, so don't think this is like Miami, all right? Just give you the heads up on that one. <laughs> so the next thing you should do when you do come here is make sure you go out and realize that wine is not the specialty of Normandy. Cider and apple products, that is the specialty of Normandy. You are gonna have cidre, cider when you are here. That's what you're gonna be drinking. It's really bubbly and it's really good. And yes, it does have some alcohol. This one has four and a half percent. Sometimes it has two and a half percent. It just depends where you go. It can be stronger or, or less. And the thing is, this is tradition because you're gonna see these apple orchards around here and that's gonna influence the food and things like that. I'll talk about number 10, what some of the things to eat when you are here. The cider, the Calvados, which is a strong alcohol, uh, apple brandy kind of stuff. They have that, apple juice for kids. You can go see where they make it. There's tours of those kind of things. And it is well worth having. So make sure you do have cider when you are here. And the last thing I wanna say about coming to Normandy is make sure you go and you eat. And here you're gonna have a lot of seafood. You know, the oysters are great. The scallops are great. Sole, that's the kind of food, that's the sole. Sole, the fish, okay, not the music, okay? You wanna eat the sole fish when you are here. It is so fresh, it is so good. And what a lot of times what they'll have is they'll actually have like a cream sauce with it. And that could be a chicken or it could be pork as well with the cream sauces in there because you have a lot of dairy here. So you have some caramels and the, the tatan, the apple crumble desserts and stuff like that. It is well worth eating. So I hope that helped you know some of the things you should see and do when you do come into Normandy. It is a fantastic time. We have really enjoyed it here. I actually wish we had more days here just to sit and relax and take in. I mean, this is just the backyard of the barn we're staying at and it's just so gorgeous here in Normandy. And so I want to say thank you to everybody in Normandy that's been so great to us, whether it was in Rune or on Fleur or Mont Saint-Michel or in Bayeux or wherever. Thank you, merci, because Normandy is a great place to visit and I highly recommend it. Easy to drive around, got a lot of traffic. This isn't a high, high traffic areas, except sometimes in the summer. Otherwise, you'll be fine. Anyway, have a great time. If you want to learn more, five things you'll love and hate about visiting Normandy, 10 things that'll shock you about Normandy, what to eat in Normandy, 10 facts about Normandy. I, I think you get the point. Two things that'll shock you about France. See, I can be, I can broaden my horizons. Check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and we really appreciate your likes and subscriptions and we hope you have a great time here in Normandy. Uh, I kind of know you will, so it's not really a problem. <laughs> Bye from Normandy.